The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it, it certainly is a, an important moment, the, the updating of AGSPA, Bill 213, the Sustainable Development Goals Act. Well, one might fairly say, finally, for it, it is a piece of legislation that an awful lot of people have been uh, anticipating with a lot of eagerness uh, for a long time. And I, I share with those people a, a satisfaction that this very significant legislation is being renewed at this point. Um, but I also share with uh, many others, those many others, a, a number of concerns about the bill. And, and I would divide these concerns uh, into concern about its structure and, and then a concern about its substance. So the, um, First, the concern about the structure. It, it is um, a serious concern to us in the NDP uh, that what has, to a great extent, been the heart and soul of EGSPA, that is, the environmental targets of the legislation, that this has been moved out of the body of the bill um, and into the regulations. After all, it's the, it's the sustainable development Goals Act, and what is the point of a, a piece of legislation of this name other than goals? So why would then the goals themselves, by and large, be, I don't think it's too strong a word to say, erased from the actual legislation? There's a great universe of these environmental goals which we uh, have worked with as a province through the the eggs per world, targets for land protection, targets for local food production, targets for solid waste, renewable energy targets, and others. But out of this whole world of important environmental targets, in the current legislation, there are only three environmental goals set out within the bill itself. And it is also true that of the three environmental goals that are set out in the legislation itself. One of them is a quite minor goal, and it's actually been met already, so it probably doesn't have a, a very uh, strong claim to the space that it has within the bill. And I think in this respect, the bill that's before us um, doesn't adequately um, embody the spirit of the EGSPA legislation. Whenever people speak about uh, EGSPA and all that has come through it uh, through the years, you can almost be guaranteed that part of that discussion will be that people say, and, and you know that was an all-party initiative, that's an all-party thing. Uh, the word all-party and the word EGSPA almost in Nova Scotia uh, discourse go together. Much of the strength um, and the regard for EGSPA that it has uh, enjoyed has come, I think, from this fact. The difficulty with moving the goals from the bill itself and into the regulations is that it, it won't be possible for these goals to uh, emerge as a result of a, an all-parties uh, uh, joint work uh, as this happened originally in 2007, uh, it won't be possible, as this bill is constructed now, for uh, the environmental goals, other than the three that I've mentioned, uh, to, to emerge as a part of an, an all-party uh, transparent debate and process in the same way uh, that they had in 2007. And to this extent, I think it is fair to say that the EGSPA enterprise uh, by this decision uh, has not been strengthened. And that's, to, that's not to mention the fact that goals and targets which don't exist in legislation, but exist rather only in, in regulation, are vulnerable goals and targets. That, that is to say that they, by their nature, are potentially more easily weakened by a future government that may, for whatever unhelpful reason, uh, wish to modify them. So I, I, I'm aware that the, we could 
reasonably expect the response to this uh, concern that the government does plan to consult in a wide way on these new targets. But people could be forgiven uh, if this didn't give them tremendous confidence. As after all, we, we are talking about a government which has approached this work in a way which has it two years uh, behind in bringing this legislation forward. And we're also talking about a general context in which consultation and EGSPA to this point uh, has meant, in fact, three questions in an online survey that was only opened up for 30 days. So none of this provides a picture or an image of a government which in bringing forward this important legislation has an adequate sense, and, and, and especially in, in a world which is now uh, over a year beyond the publication of that IPCC report, 1.5 degrees within 11 years, uh, none of all of this is providing the sense that we, we need to see as this important legislation is brought forward of a, a government uh, that in the type of legislation it brings forward, the shape of it, the approach it gives to it, uh, takes in and understands and is reflecting the urgency of the climate moment. And this brings me to the uh, more substantive concern uh, uh, that we have with the bill about the greenhouse gas emissions target, which is in the bill itself. When we talk about emissions reductions targets, I think it's true that there's really only, ultimately, uh, one question that is to be posed when we evaluate any such goals, and that is, is this goal, is this target, or is it not consistent with the IPCC's limit of containing global warming within 1.5 degrees of pre-industrial levels over the next 11 years? Now the target here, 53% under 2005 levels by 2030, for our part here in Nova Scotia, does not equitably meet that text, test. Now the the argument may be anticipated that the emissions targets are of a piece with what the IPCC has called for, but this is not in fact really the case. The IPCC report sets out very clearly that governments that have more ability to make steeper reductions than those which can be mechanically extrapolated from the global reductions called for have a responsibility to do so. And that would include us here in Nova Scotia. In fact, not only do we have the ability to do this, we also can approach this as the unparalleled opportunity it is for the greatest uh, job creation moment which our province uh, has witnessed since wartime. This is the reasoning behind the fact that we in the NDP uh, have called in a repeated way uh, for an emissions reduction car target of 50% below 1990 levels by 2030, or to use the calculus that's used in this legislation, a target of 58% below 2005 levels uh, by the same year. So at this moment, this at this moment of climate emergency is arguably this point, this is arguably the core of this present legislation. And we need in Nova Scotia a Sustainable Development Goals Act, which is stronger than this one is at this core. So thank you, Mr. Speaker.